Hi everyone, Peggy here. Welcome to the video. This week I'm turning a maple log to a bowl and showing you the moisture content there, which is right around 13%. This piece, along with several others, have been drying for about a year and a half. Uh, I harvested this from uh, my parents' land, which is in Maine. And here I'm just making a blank out of this one log making two blanks actually. If you have any questions about the chainsaw, uh, let me know in the comments. It is a new to me chainsaw. bought it on Amazon and I will leave the link in the video description. Um, not that I have a ton of experience with chainsaws, but I wanted one that was um, non-gas and non-corded. So this is a battery one and so far I like it a lot and it wasn't uh, ungodly expensive. So I'll leave the link in the video description. Saw me finding center. After finding center, I decided to uh, take off the bark uh, so it didn't come flying off the lathe and, and hurt me and, and make a mess. But I spent a little bit getting the bark off, um, a couple different kinds of methods. And the reason for um, finding center a couple times on here, which I think I didn't show the, the second one, is I decided to um, make the bottom uh, the um, flat part so I could save as much as the material as possible. So clearly it's a little out of round here, so I'm putting it on the lathe on a woodworm screw and I will bring the tailstock up and start turning uh, slowly and carefully to uh, put it in balance. Starting the lathe here, it's at about 450 RPM and using the Carter and Sun bowl gouge as usual. Turning a little bit of air th there as you can see, but just taking slow passes and um, removing material slowly. Stopping to check the progress and adjust the speed accordingly. Here I have it turned up to about 650 and still remaining with the uh, bowl gouge. So here, as you can see, I have removed the tailstock and placing the tool on the blank. It is in balance now, which is which is very good for speeding up the lathe. Here, it's at about 900 RPM, making some pull cuts at the bottom. Going for a simple shaped bowl here, nothing nothing too fancy, uh, just a rounded rounded sides. Realize I'm not going to have a necessarily a live edge pole, but a um, sort of organic shaped rim that I'm going for, which is why I put the blank on the way I did. Diamond parting tool here to start the foot, the recess of the foot. And I've been asked a few times in the comments to some videos why I choose uh, a foot or 
not a foot flat bottom versus uh, mortars or tenon. And the best answer I have is it depends. And it really depends on the bowl and the size of the, for me, the size of the bowl um, and what kind of shape or style that I'm going for. Um, if it's a very uh, simple bowl, sometimes I will do a simple foot um, and then sometimes I'll do just a flat bottom and, and use a tenon and turn that off. Um, it really depends. I don't have a, a black and white answer, I guess. It depends on what I'm feeling with the piece at the time. If you have a different idea on how to choose that, uh, please mention it in the comments and uh, let people know why you choose what you do. So here I have it reversed on the uh, four jaw chuck and starting the hollowing out process. Still with the uh, bowl gouge. Taking it slow at first because it's not completely flat on the top. So uh, just taking off material to make it as in balance as I can. And I'm just starting to hog out some of the material. Here, what you see me doing is using some sawdust and CA glue. And this is to fill in uh, some of the, uh, there was a couple of small cracks, nothing major, but I wanted to make sure the cracks didn't go any further, so. If you haven't tried Starbond, there is a link in the video description to um, the Starbond products, which I highly recommend, and using the, the Starbond thin here. So getting back to hollowing out the inside of the bowl here. Increase the speed to around 1100 here. And I'm going to shut up for a minute and uh, let you watch some of the, the hollowing if you wish. And I'll be back in a couple minutes. Using the uh, Easy Wood Tools number one hollower here to uh, try to, to finalize the thickness of the bowl. Um, this tool is good for getting around corners where the um, sort of the iris grind on the bowl gouges is not, or the sweat back grind. This gets around the corners uh, much easier than the other. progress and back to the bowl couch. Making the final shape of the rim went for a, uh, a simple um, slanted down rim. Starting the sanding process at 80 grit. I don't show all the sanding, but I do sand from 80 to 120 to 150, 180, 220, 320, and 400. And some denatured alcohol here after all of the sanding.
taking off the dust and debris, and then finishing this with Danish oil. Ended up putting about four coats of Danish oil on. Hey, thanks for sticking around and the video is not over yet, but I wanted to take a moment and say thank you for watching. And if you're new here and haven't subscribed, please do consider hitting that subscribe button and a thumbs up button as well. It really helps me out and it lets YouTube know that uh, people are liking the videos and uh, it helps the YouTube algorithm and gets YouTube to get the video in front of more people. So thank you ahead of time. Uh, here I'm using uh, the Axe polishing paste because I used the Danish oil um, I didn't really need to use the sanding portion of that so I went straight to the polishing paste and as you can see or we'll see here in a moment um, it does leave a really nice sheen and if you haven't followed me on Instagram or Facebook I will leave the links in the video description love to have you along there and here I'm sanding the, the foot, making sure that's flat before I um, use the branding iron, as you'll see here. I'll put a link to the branding iron as well. I do get a lot of questions about that. And here is the uh, finished bowl. Thanks again for watching, everyone. I really do appreciate it and hope everyone is doing well. And until next time, peace out.